given the choice whether to rule a corrupt and failing empire or to challenge the fates for another throw, a better throw against one's destiny. What was a king to do? One can only match, move by move, the machinations of fate, and thus defy the tyrannous stars. So I returned to the sanctuary of my enemy, the fortress of the Sarafan Brotherhood, deemed impossible for any man to penetrate. <laughs> impossible for any man. Deep within these walls my prey awaited. Mobius the Time Streamer, deceiver and eternal gamester, using living beings as his pawns. In the end, we'd rooted out an entire nest of the fiends. But we had swept that area already. Not well enough, but no matter. We purged every last one of that brute with fire where their souls now rest. Lord Mobius will be pleased. It was time for Mobius to answer a few questions. I hoped for his sake to find him in a forthcoming mood. Help me! Help me! Oh, please, no! From time to time, it is necessary to feed. And the unusual event of a feast prepared by the Seraphan must be savored. What was that? Ah! God! <laughs> the touch of water is like acid to a vampire. I had to find another way to pass. This passage undoubtedly led to the Time Streamer. My prey was nearly in my grasp. But the door had been sealed by a blessed barrier. As I approached, the Reaver resonated in response. Perhaps its dark sorcery could dispel these holy barriers. Locked. What a love of doors these pathetic humans have. This emblem was unmistakably of vampire origin and designed to enhance the Reaver's power. But this coincidence seemed too convenient. Mobius clearly meant for me to find it. Sound the alarm! Vampire! Don't let him escape! 
Surround him! Surrender, fiend, and we will promise you an easy death. I could promise you the same, but it would be a lie. This door had been equipped with a singular lock, requiring an unusual key. Somehow, I would find it. Yes, I understand. It will be done. The stage is set. You needn't linger in the shadows, Cain. It has been a long time. Hasn't it? No banter, Mobius. You know why I'm here. Yes. Raziel. You sought to introduce your own pawn into this game. And now he's been swept from the board. By your hand, I suspect. Where is he? Perhaps you should ask when. <laughs> How humiliating it must be for you to come begging at my doorstep for answers. Enough wordplay. Don't threaten me, Ken. You see, I have the upper hand. How remarkable that the great Cain should succumb to the Scepter's power like any common vampire. <clears throat> Still so arrogant after all these years, thinking you've devised some brilliant plan. You know nothing. You have read the signs, but missed their meaning. You believe you are that myth of vampire prophecy, the scion of balance, and that Raziel holds the key to fulfilling your destiny. <clears throat> but your messianic delusions have blinded you to Raziel's true nature. You have no idea what you've unleashed. There was a time when you might have heeded wise counsel when it was offered. Now, your vanity has made you witless. You will have to learn the truth for yourself. You'll be needing this. Your strength will return after I have departed. But by then, you will have more urgent concerns than pursuing me. Perhaps, when we next meet, you will have learned a little humility. These strange creatures seem to manifest from the very shadows. Mobius's attempt at stopping me was not one of his better efforts. When I found him, it would be my turn to offer a few surprises. Surrender, Raziel. Abandon this petty rebellion. It was I who made you. Your life had played out, and in my grace, I spared you. You are my reaper of souls. You have no other purpose, no higher destiny. Just this. Accept your calling, Raziel. Let go of these vain hopes. Relinquish your will, and feed. No. What do you profit from this defiance? There's some grim satisfaction in infuriating you. My patience is eternal, Raziel. How many eons can you bear to languish here? The wheel of fate must turn. All are redeemed in the cleansing agony of birth, death, and rebirth. This is the engine of life, the purifying rhythm of the universe, to which all souls are irresistibly drawn. Yours is a necessary and noble function, Raziel. Enough of your sermonizing. Are you trying to bore me into submission? 
Why must this game go on? We both know what you are. You are no better than the vampires you so despise. A voracious parasite, cloaking its appetite in a shroud of righteousness. I refuse to do your will. I can see into your heart, Raziel. It is not your will, but cowardice that keeps you here. How so? You know what fate awaits you when you leave the underworld. That phantom weapon you bear is a constant reminder, isn't it? The sword is waiting for you out there somewhere, and you tarry so as not to meet it. I could not deny it. As long as I lingered here, defying my captor, I was able to postpone what I feared was my inevitable doom. To become the ravenous spirit imprisoned in the Reaver Blade. But that sentence was no worse than the stalemate I now endured. Better to face one's destiny than cower from it. Harvester of souls, I created you. And to this function, my angel of death, you will return. Enough. Yes. I submit. Very good. Indulge your hunger. Yes, embrace your calling, Raziel. You will find that just as defiance has its price, so obedience as its rewards. And submission is not always what it seems. Below me swirled an ominous looking mist. I knew that if I fell, it would mean my peril. Do you believe your worthiness is so easily proved? Your way is sealed until you have offered further evidence of your obedience. I must feed you before I depart this place. You must feed yourself, Raziel. The wheel must turn. Ah, now you understand. You may go, but remember, you are mine. You can no more escape from me than you can escape yourself. escape had not been anticipated, or my benevolent master would not have expended such efforts to prevent me from going. And if my departure displeased him, then that was a victory, however small, for me. At last, I discovered a conduit into the material realm. I would finally escape the spirit world and take one step farther from my tormentor. <laughs> Did you think to receive the same favors after your rebellion as before? No, Raziel. I have no need for you to enter the physical world, so no conduit will be granted. You serve me adequately as a wraith, and a wraith you will remain. No! So, my restraints had not been removed, only loosened. I would not be held prisoner in the Spectral Realm. There had to be another way. As I emerged, I was granted a vision of what I would become if I did not escape the Spectral Realm. For these two were agents of my master, 
hunting the lost souls that struggled to escape the endless twilight of the underworld. My master's plan for me was ominously clear. Like these mindless hunters, I existed only to fuel him with souls, siphoning their energy to feed him and his wheel of fate. I had to break these bonds, while I still possessed my own will. This artifact seemed as though it was made for that unusual lock. Now the door could be opened. Malik, the great Seraphim warrior. I had met him before. His sword and shield seemed to have gone astray. Where can I find your master? <laughs> Quickly, Mobius is... In the tower! Good. <laughs> Malik's missing shield. I hated to restore his dignity, but I would need to return this to his monument before I could progress. Malek's sword belonged in his right hand. However distasteful this errand was, I would return it to its proper place. The way to the tower now lay before me. I looked forward to finding Mobius and resuming our conversation. Here you are at last. I see you found a fragment of the Balance Emblem. This will be of even further use to you, if you can find the other three. Now, shall we? Yes. Let us continue our conversation, but on a somewhat different footing. Now, what do you have to tell me, Mobius? You cannot kill me. We both know that this is not how or when I die. Death is not the only possible outcome. Your delusions of fulfilling the vampire's foolish prophecies have badly distorted your judgment. And Raziel is not what you think. You dare imagine what I think. So, you prevented Raziel's soul from entering the Reaver. Do you believe for a moment that by this you have averted your fate? or his, or that of Nosgoth itself. Your manipulations are pathetic. Yet Raziel retains his free will, and that's what frightens you, isn't it, Mobius? You cannot see his path, and so you cannot control it. And neither can you. Yes, Raziel is shrouded from us, but we see the ripples of his potential actions, and every path he might choose leads to the same outcome. He will kill you, Cain. In sparing Raziel, you have written your own death sentence. You still have not answered the question I came to ask. Where is Raziel? He is not in a true sense, here. Not now. Don't try my patience, Mobius. What have you done with him? He is contained. In time, it may be safe to release him. His destiny must be completed. He will enter the sword. But until that time, he is dangerous. Far more dangerous than you could understand. And your incontrovertible evidence? The answers are plain, if you know where to look. Go west of the pillars. There you will find a testament, written in stone. But stones too can lie. The pillars of Nosgoth stood pristine against the horizon. To the west, I would find the enlightenment Mobius felt I lacked. There had to be a way to escape the spirit world without the help my master was pleased to deny me. Only in the material realm would I have a chance to seek my destiny or change it.
In this crypt, I discovered ethereal gases rising from the moldering corpse within. As I neared, I felt a distinct spiritual pull, and the closer I approached, the more that pull intensified. In the end, it was not difficult. I projected myself down into that tomb. And found myself reborn into the material world. It was a loathsome vessel, but with an effort of will, that too could change. It says she won't go near the place. I tell you, the pillars are haunted. Haunted? I heard a woman's voice talking and moaning, and there was no one there. How many vampires have you killed, and you can't face down one ghost? I knew who these were. Vampire hunters, scouring the countryside, destroying what had once been my kind. <gasps> my god, what is that? A vampire or a demon? Where? Here. Get him! Quickly! No mercy. These were Mobius's hunters, mercenaries enlisted in his crusade to exterminate the vampires. His insignia was unmistakable. But this meant I'd been captive in the underworld for centuries. I had lost 500 years. Then I knew what ghost it was that haunted the pillars. Ariel, the specter of the murdered Balance Guardian. Perhaps she could provide the answers I sought. But first I would have to find a way out of this cemetery. This temple's facade hinted at some ancient vampire origin, for it bore the sign of the Reaver and was marked with the elemental symbol of light. The mystery of the Reaver might be answered within, but this edifice was too high for me to reach. Another temple, this one marked with the elemental symbol of darkness. This edifice, like the other one, was too high for me to reach. An ancient gate, sealed by the powers of light and darkness, barred the way to the pillars beyond. To depart this place and continue my journey, I would have to find the means to open it. Raziel! Raziel! Fallen hero! Renegade and traitor! What is this? How do you know me? Raziel, what are you? Why should they know you? You are nothing. It seemed my method of entering the physical realm was not altogether original. But where had these beings come from? This edifice, marked with the elemental light symbol, was clearly much older than the ruins in the rest of the cemetery. The door was far too high to reach, and to open it, it seemed the Reaver would need to be imbued with the power of darkness. Clearly, I had more to accomplish before I could discover what lay within. As I stepped through, I felt a sense of displacement as some arcane sorcery transported me away. This was the ancient ruin of a vampire civilization. Perhaps here, I would finally decipher the riddle of my destiny. Throughout these ruins, I found murals depicting the seminal events of vampire history. These scenes commemorated a great war between the ancient vampires and their rivals. In triumph, they banished their adversaries from the world, and raised the pillars as the lock that binds them. The image of the Reaver was inscribed throughout this place, always depicted with reverence. The vampire's holy weapon was destined to be borne by their prophesied hero, for whom it was forged. But if this was my destiny, why had the Reaver tried to consume me? This scene depicted the appointment of the original vampire guardians, each summoned to serve when the pillars were raised. Each Guardian is aligned to the principle of the pillar he serves, and the Balance Guardian is the axis of the mold.
At last it was done. The Reaver was forged with darkness. As I felt this new power coursing within the Wraith Blade, I knew that now the Light Temple would open to me. Against all odds, I had stumbled into Cain's own mausoleum. This seemed an unlikely coincidence. Again, I experienced an odd sense of displeasure as I was transported to the vampire ruin once more. But this chamber was different than the first. In their defeat, the vampire's enemy retaliated with a terrible curse, afflicting the vampires with a bloodthirst that turned their once noble race into ravenous predators. This curse plunged the vampires into despair and apparently drove many to madness and self-annihilation. What was it that so devastated them that they were driven to suicide? I had succeeded. The Reaver was forged with the power of light, and now my way was clear. I would seek out Ariel at the Pillars and see if she could enlighten me. At last, the gate yielded to the powers of light and darkness with which the Reaver had been forged. The way to the Pillars was open. place long before my birth. Centuries before the corruption set in that would poison the land and put me on the treacherous path I still followed. In the future, these edifices would be condemned to darkness and decay. I would cause their fall and build my empire upon their ruins. Was it still possible? That with the right knowledge, the right moves, I might one day see Nosgoth restored, the pillars pure once more. My answer, according to Mobius, lay somewhere to the west of this place. I could restore the world, perhaps, but never again could I give Nosgoth back her innocence. My path ended here. Offering only this empty vista, was this another of Mobius's little jokes? Or a puzzle for which I had not yet found the answer? Another fragment of the balance emblem. This one endowed with the properties of dimension. Perhaps this would reveal the mystery that lay west of the pillars, if Mobius spoke the truth and there was indeed something there to find. The mist that shrouded this lake, miraculously now cleared away, revealing an ancient citadel. So Mobius had not lied. Or perhaps this was simply another of the time streamer's illusions meant to slow my true endeavor. The vampire hunters, brazen as they were, feared to walk these paths. I knew one spirit haunted this place. Perhaps there were others as well. I sought to unravel the mystery of my fate, and in this image lay my first clue. For this scene depicted the forging of the Reaver, the weapon destined to become my prison, and I recognized its maker. The years had changed him. But this was unmistakably the Vampire Vorador, and in this era, he still lived. 
If I could reach him before Mobius's mob hunted him down, he would provide the answers I sought. These images chronicled Vorador's creation. As I already knew, he had not been born a vampire, but had been turned by the infamous Janos Audrin. But this mural suggested that Vorador's origins were even more significant. Apparently, he was the first human to whom the Dark Gift had been passed. This was the vampire's desperate bid to preserve their bloodline, for their enemies had cursed them not only with bloodthirst, but with sterility as well. Approaching the tomb, I was met by the specter of the Guardian himself. Eternity weighs heavily. I have a solution. I bear it in atonement. But your moment of existence has passed. Come, and be released. Apparently, a single soul was not enough to activate this spirit vessel. Perhaps another specter was lurking around here somewhere. I was met by the specter of the Nature Guardian, monstrously deformed since its death centuries ago. Rejoice, creature, for today your spirit will return to the One. As the Reaver absorbed the souls of the Nature and Conflict Guardians, it was imbued with the elemental power of fire with which their principles were aligned. I was now equipped to reach the Pillars. Once again, I beheld the Pillars of Nosgoth, crumbling in decay now, following the corruption of the Circle. Here I would find Ariel, the specter of the murdered Balance Guardian, and the last pure, undefiled member of the Guardian Circle. Bound here upon her death, she was doomed to haunt these pillars until her successor fulfilled his terrible duty and balance was restored. What manner of creature approaches? I know you well, Ariel, though you do not yet know me. I have no time for riddles, strange one. All you have is time. I have come to seek your guidance. I counsel only one man, and you are not he. But you will know him soon. The contagion of your kind is coming to an end. My kind? What exactly do you think I am? Your name shall remain unspoken, as decreed by our ancestors. You serve the one who so brutally took my life and set this tragedy in motion. But even now, hope is at work. Balance will be restored, and your kind will be expelled forever. You have pinned your hopes on Cain. He will disappoint you. <sighs> what can you know of Cain? More than you could ever fathom. He will do what he must when the time comes. By choosing his own death. A sacrifice for the world. You don't know Cain very well. I know what he is called to do. My faith sustains me. Is it faith or fear? You know that if Cain refuses the sacrifice, you will never leave here. And you begin to suspect. I will not hear your poison, fiend. Grant me the answers I require, and I will leave you to your pathetic delusions. Ask then. I seek the vampire Vorador. To kill him, perhaps, or to join him in death. But for Cain, he is the last of his kind. Mobius's mob has done its work. My reasons are my own. His refuge lies in the heart of the Black Forest. And may you molder there together until the end. This one apparently aligned with the elemental power of air. These murals 
vehicles had suffered some damage. Once again I recognized the vampire's hero, but this scene revealed something new. For here they had also depicted his destined adversary, now partially obscured, who seemed to bear a flaming sword. In winning all, we lost all. In winning what we thought mattered, we lost what truly mattered. But for you, there is a chance. What chance is that? The bliss of death. I offer it. But I do not accept. As the Reaver absorbed the souls of the Mind and Dimension Guardians, it was imbued with the elemental power of air with which their principles were aligned. With the Reaver endowed with the elemental power of air, the way to Vorador's refuge lay open at last. If the old vampire still lived, he alone could tell me how to escape the terrible destiny charted for me when the Reaver was forged. Vorador's refuge was hidden deep within the Black Forest. I hoped to find him before Mobius' cutthroats did. So I arrived at the citadel of my vampire ancestors, long abandoned since their extinction eons ago. Perhaps it still held the wisdom of its creators. Here, Mobius said I would find proof that Raziel was not what I thought he was, or hoped he would be. But in sending me here, Mobius had done me an unexpected, or perhaps an unwitting, service. For it was my destiny, not Raziel's. My role as scion of balance, whose secrets I was here to discover. Here, no doubt, was the evidence Mobius wished me to have. For the vampires had prophesied not one, but two champions. One destined to be Nosgoth's redeemer, the other its destroyer. The Vampire's hero wielded the Reaver, forged for this very purpose. His opponent was clearly the champion of their adversaries, the Hilden, and brandished a flaming sword. The foretold outcome was unambiguous. The Vampire hero would fall. These statues were singularly inanimate. I knew better than to assume they would always remain so. The third fragment of the Balance Emblem endowed the Reaver with the elemental power of lightning. A new area of the Vampire Citadel lay open. I still had much to discover. Nestled deep in the Black Forest, Vorador had once held court over a private kingdom, as decadent as it was depraved. Now all was still. I hoped I had not arrived too late. Thank you. 
This pool seemed related to the portals which had transported me into the vampire ruins, but its surface was disturbed by the spouting of these gargoyles. These gargoyles were effigies of the vampire's enemies. In the corresponding murals, they were impaled by heroic vampire warriors. Perhaps this was a clue. This mysterious chamber was clearly significant. Perhaps I would finally find the elusive Vorador within. This statue appeared to be the same hero I had seen depicted in the fountain room. This had to be significant. This was indeed the vampire warrior depicted in the fountain room, for here was the hero's weapon. This could be the key to solving the riddle of the fountain. With this third and final weapon, the mystery of the fountain would finally be solved. Here, the images were unadulterated, and their meaning ominously clear. The vampire hero, the bearer of the Reaver Blade, was confronted by an adversary worthy of his powers. The enemy race, long banished, had a champion of their own, with flaming eyes and a fiery sword. The resemblance I bore to the adversary mocked all my hopes. Had Cain been the vampire hero of prophecy all along? Did he suspect what I was? For if I was this foretold adversary, then Mobius was right, and had always been right. I was destined to fight Cain and destroy him, or be destroyed. What part did free will play in any of this? Your deliverance is at hand. In death is your release. This state is merely a tone man. Once more, the Reaver absorbed the spirits of the former vampire guardians, and thus was imbued with the elemental power of water. Perhaps now I could enter that mysterious crypt at the end of the garden. So, our wretched little savior returns. Come to join the last pathetic battle of the vampire race? But on which side, I wonder? I've not come to fight you, Vorador. You don't know why you're here. I know this much. That you are the author of my fate. And as such, only you can rewrite it. <laughs> you give me too much credit. You forged the Reaver. I have seen the evidence. I was its maker, yes. Then you know its purpose. No. Only the scraps of prophecy my master shared with me. And do these scraps explain why you would forge a weapon to imprison your savior? Ah, well then. It seems we have our answer. You've chosen your path. I have chosen nothing. I've been deceived at every turn. You seem to know what I am. Tell me. 
I thought I did once. But now all the prophecies have failed. The pillars are corrupted. I am the last of my kind. And when Mobius's hunters find me, it will have all been for nothing. You've forgotten about Cain. Ah, yes, Cain. I fear he shoulders a greater burden than he realizes. I cannot help you, even if I was inclined to. I crafted the Reaver Blade, but only at the behest of my sire, Janos Audrin. What sorcery he and the others laid upon the sword afterward, I cannot say. Janos tried to give me the Reaver before he died. He said that it was forged for me, but what did he mean? As my weapon, or my prison? Perhaps you should ask him yourself. Janos is here. In a manner of speaking. The greatest of us all, the father of our race. The Seraphim tore the heart from his living body five centuries ago. But there's no sign of decay. How is this possible after all these years? Somewhere, the heart still beats. And while it does, the body will remain preserved. If his heart could be restored, Janos might yet be raised. And you haven't tried to recover it in all these years? Many times. But our enemies hid the heart too well. It was taken as a trophy to Avernus Cathedral centuries ago, where they christened it the Heart of Darkness. Believing that it embodies the essence of our dark gift, they hid the heart away lest it fall into the wrong hands. Our hands. Redeem yourself. You may be our last hope. Perhaps you alone can find the heart if it is meant to be found. If Janus can be resurrected, he will have all the answers you require. This key will open your way to Avernus. But be advised, there are dark sorceries at work in the Cathedral. You must be on your guard. Avernus is in flames, and with it, our hopes may evaporate. How can I find the heart in the midst of such chaos? You must act quickly. But beware an ancient evil dwells within, long unspoken among our kind. Undoubtedly, this is the source of the corruption that infects the circle. If you are to succeed, you must resist its influence. This history in part I knew already. How as the vampires began to die out, the pillars summoned human guardians to fulfill their roles. It seemed the ancient vampires had adopted, and when necessary, abducted the human guardians and made vampires of them when they came of age, until the humans rebelled against their masters. And here, I made a surprising discovery. It was Mobius, the time streamer, and Mortanius, guardian of death, who led the bloody revolt. Now. I understood why Mobius hated me so intensely. I was the first vampire guardian in all these centuries, and he knew what my coming signified. Or perhaps I reminded him of all he had forsaken. I was confronted again with depictions of the vampire's champion, the bearer of the Reaver Blade. And here too was his Hilden adversary, with blazing eyes brandishing a flaming sword. Two heroes locked in combat which only one would survive. But which one? These murals prophesied two possible outcomes. I 
didn't know what Mobius was trying to concoct. But this all seemed too convenient. With this fourth and final fragment, the balance emblem was complete. I now had the means to unseal the mysterious chamber at the heart of the Citadel. For my ancient ancestors, the Dark Gift was clearly a curse, damning them to a kind of spiritual purgatory. But why were they compelled to seal this chamber so securely? Perhaps the lock was not meant to keep intruders out, but to imprison something within. Cain, scion of balance, savior of Nosgoth. What is this? Your arrival is foretold. The fates have willed it. Is that so? I am the oracle of your ancestors. I can provide the answers you require. You needn't speak. I know your mind. You seek knowledge of your creature, Raziel. This I can offer, if you will look. He has found the body of Janus Audrey. He journeys now to Avernus Cathedral to seek the Heart of Darkness. You know what this means. And why would I trust your prophecies? These events are already written just as you feared. But there is still time. He can be stopped. If Avernus is in flames, Raziel is five centuries beyond my reach. I may aid you in this regard as well. This portal will transport you in time to the very hour that Raziel arrives in Avernus. This task is yours to carry out, since it was you who made him what he is. When you are ready, you may pass through. I knew, of course, that this oracle was not to be trusted. But in the end, what choice did I have? This peculiar sensation was familiar to me, and the chamber did indeed appear altered by time. In this regard, at least, the oracle seemed to have been truthful. I have delivered you faithfully to the very hour you desire. You know what must be done, Cain. There is only one way to prevent Raziel from doing great harm. He is not my enemy. But you... Are his. From this vantage point, I could see the city of Avernus in flames. The Oracle had indeed brought me to the time it promised. It might also be true then that Raziel was already there, seeking the Heart of Darkness. If so, he had to be stopped. I could not allow Janus to be raised. Somewhere in this great cathedral, the heart of darkness lay concealed. The city outside was in chaos, and the cathedral would not be immune for long. During such times, buried secrets were often suddenly revealed, or lost forever. I had seen this symbol throughout these ruins. I should have realized what it was they worshipped. Now there was no question, for this scene depicted the ancient vampires' torment and despair as their curse cast them from the wheel of fate. So this was the god whose abandonment had driven them to madness and suicide. Finally, I understood. It was not the bloodthirst, but their immortality that was the true nature of their enemy's curse. The wisest, strongest, most noble race, gulled by the voice of that old parasite. But I had seen him, and whatever he was, he was no god. Rejoice in the turning of the wheel. It does turn, but we cannot see it. Your wheel is a lie. You will turn the wheel. Come. Die.
as the Reaver absorbed the souls of the original energy and time guardians, it was imbued with the elemental power of Earth with which their principles were aligned. As the handsome coffin hides the putrefying corpse within, the great cathedral of Avernus seemed to hold its own secrets, hidden in the catacombs beneath its vaulted chambers. Was this the source of the corruption that infected Nosgoth? Vorador had hinted it something more. History is written by the victors. Beneath the vaults of Avernus, I discovered scenes that told a familiar story, but from a very different point of view. This was the work of the enemy race, and revealed what the vampire histories had conveniently omitted. How the noble vampires, God-ridden and righteous, had started the wars that would destroy both races, victor and vanquished alike. Their adversaries opposed the vampire's god and refused to submit to the wheel of fate. For this, they were banished. I now understood the poetic irony of their curse, and my resemblance to the vampire's enemy no longer seemed so accidental. The banished race foretold a hero who would deliver them from their oppressors and destroy the shackles of the vampire's tyrannous god, the same hero that bore the flaming sword. What game was this, where every player on the board claimed the same pawn? So, Raziel, your true nature is finally revealed. You were never the vampire's savior. It is to the Hilden race you belong. And when Cain realizes this, what do you think he will do? Great Hashagik, we hear you. We We offer this sacrifice upon the altar of the world. The blood of our firstborn to be sacrificed. In the depths of Avernus Cathedral, I stumbled upon a bloody ritual. Was this the source of the corruption that had overtaken the city? May this blood nourish you for all eternity. Nourish your wrath from us, great God. The wrath of Hashagik has once more been averted. Depart now, as ever, in his service. We tremble and we obey. What was it that these deluded humans worshipped with such fervor? Was this the dreaded unspoken that Vorador had warned me about? Poor God inhabited this hideous pit. I was about to meet it. Mm, I smell no blood. Throat cut first, blood gouging, then it falls into the pit. The sacrifice is rejected. You will know my wrath. Not possible. No, it could not be. Stand away, monster. No. That voice. Not possible. I know that voice. But he fell. The abyss. He ended there. I did not fall into the abyss. Oh, it remembers that, does it? I was thrown in by my own brethren. I heard what you did to them. And now... You have found me at last. 
Terrell. <laughs> Terrell. Yes. That was my name then. The others were grotesque, but... Yes, I am changed. I have become a god. Greater than you ever were, Raziel. You were never a god. Greater even than Cain! It is to you that these humans offer their blood sacrifices? Hush, a geek. Hush, a geek. Yes. But how did this happen? I was summoned. There was darkness and great hunger. And then I was found. Why do you stay in this terrible place? Why stay? Would I remain if I could get out? While they hound me, and tear at me, and... <laughs> the hour is at hand, as it was foretold. Terrell? We use his voice to command the disciples above. We demand offerings to keep the host alive. He has been a durable vessel, but he can take us no further. You must prevail. The champion of our enemy draws near. No! I must have blood! Bring me blood! Or feel the wrath of your god. You! Yours! Yes, it will strengthen me against them. What are you doing? No. No more questions. No more worship. Time to run. Time to scream. Time to die. Yes, now. Go, speed your endeavor. Face him and kill him! Destroy the binding at last! We shall all be... Free! Come to me, my undead son. Make haste to the pillars. The stage is set for the grand finale. You will have your vengeance. Mortanius! So, you have come out into the open at last. The binding must be fragile indeed. But you will find you are too late. What am I too late for this time? No. No. Not now. Uh, you are too late for the victory you sought. I have beaten you after all. You have mistaken my identity. Have I? You forget who schooled me in the ancient prophecies. Uh, 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 this vessel speaks truly. You are indeed overdue, but it no longer matters in the least. With or without you, we will prevail. So, I finally meet the Unspoken. And here it is, nestled in the heart of the Circle itself. Ironic. <laughs> Poetic justice. To topple the foundations of the pillars from within. We shall have our revenge in full measure and for all time. Ah! Ah! This one has little strength left. One must not break him. Your kind does not like to lose. I seek the heart of darkness. Ah, now you think of that. But as I told you, you are too late. The heart has served its function. 
I have used it to set prophecy in motion. I created the champion foretold by my masters, who is destined to be your destroyer. The Scion of Balance will save Nosgoth. The Pillars will return to vampire guardianship as intended, and your race will be cast down forever. Cain! You use the Heart of Darkness to create Cain! How else? I refused at first to believe the ancient myths. I thought the vampires were simply a plague upon mankind, a pestilence we had to control. But they were right, and we were wrong to overthrow them, Mobius and I. We didn't understand what it was the Pillars were holding back. I have made my atonement. I will continue to make it to the end, which will be soon now. But I know Cain will set it right. He will restore balance. And none too soon. My enemy is growing stronger. Where is the heart of darkness now? Did you destroy it? <laughs> you still don't understand, do you? You cannot make use of it as long as Cain guards it with his life. Cain has it. It is in Cain. Check and mate. This deed will redeem first me and then all, Nosgoth. It must. It... Uh, 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 this one grows weak, but we will soon have a stronger vessel. The long-awaited hour approaches. Our release is at hand. <gasps> I must finish it now. Why is this no surprise? Because our destinies run together, Raziel, like two rivers that have met and can never be distinct again. At your every fatal turn, you'll find me. And the free will you said was mine. What has become of that? You still have it. And that has everything to do with my presence here now. It was your machinations that set my destiny in motion. The coin you tossed has struck the earth. Now you must abide by its outcome. The coin is still turning, Raziel. To reach the resolution we both can live with, that will best serve our futures, Janos Audren must not be raised. Because you do not wish it. Is my free will to be exercised only when it accords with your whim? There is much more at stake in this than you know. Yes, and it is Janos who has the answers I desire. You must trust me, Raziel. Our intentions for Nosgoth, for our futures, are not so diverse. I must trust you. Or... I have not come here to threaten you, Raziel. You say that while you hold in your hand the instrument of my doom? I saved you from the Reaver once. I have no intention of imprisoning you within the blade. At least not until the moment it serves your plans to do so. You are not the only one at risk. I may carry the instrument of your destruction, but I too have taken a chance in coming here. Or haven't you realized? You bear the only weapon that can kill me. Then you know what I am, and who you are. I believe I do. And still you think you can move me about like your pawn? Think again, Cain. Take heed, Raziel. Why? If we are who we are, then are we not destined to fight to the death to decide the fate of Nosgoth? Don't be a fool! I will not fight you! And that will be the prophesied hero's battle? I win because you will not fight me? <laughs> the mighty Cain, scion of balance, would-be savior of Nosgoth, surrenders before the final battle even begins! Very well. If this will make you see reason. Now, you will listen to me. 
the heart of darkness must remain undiscovered. Great harm will come of its use. You don't know where it is, do you? No. You never looked for it. It doesn't matter, Raziel. Listen to me. You must understand that every creature is bound to one predestined path. We are all shackled. To the wheel of fate. Believe me, I know that even better than you do. All but one. Because of your remaking, you are the one unbound creature. The one among us all that truly has free will. You have a choice, Raziel. Which I'm sure I must make at your direction. Your pawn has reached the end of the board, Cain. And now my powers may even surpass yours. How ironic. If the creature that you made should prove your own undoing. Now, we finish this. Once and for all. <laughs> Raziel. Faith Victus. I didn't. <laughs> Woe to the conquered. I have found the heart of darkness. And you go to oblivion. The madness of this place had somehow fueled my rage, and as it subsided, I felt no elation, no sense of victory. Only a calm certainty that we had once again walked blindly into our enemy's trap. I couldn't be sure whether Cain had truly intended to destroy me, and now it appeared I would never know. In my absence, the estate had been overrun by Mobius' soldiers. I hoped that they had not yet found the entrance to the crypt or discovered the body of Janos. Of Vorador, there was no sign. Raziel, the conquering hero. I understand we ought to offer congratulations. Cain, at last, is dead. I suppose you expect similar congratulations on the death of Vorador. Or has he eluded you? We have him. But not without a considerable price in blood. That will have pleased him. Let it sustain him until his head is off, and every vampire in Nosgoth at last is dead. And will that knowledge sustain you? You too are going to your death. For a true servant of the One God, death is never bitter. I will go. Again at peace with the knowledge that I have played my small part in our master's plans. Cain is at last destroyed, and you have carried out the deed. Which hero do you think you are now? The vampire savior, or the other one? Have you realized yet that it didn't matter to us which one either of you thought you were? so long as the result was the same in the end. And now, Cain is dead. Really, I cannot thank you enough. So, this has all been arranged every step of the way. And Cain thought I truly had free will. Oh, but you do. And there's the greatest triumph of all. To have compelled the one player who could choose into doing exactly what we required. Well done, faithful servant. And now, I have an execution to see to. This relic had come at so high a cost. My blood offering for the answers I sought from this enigmatic corpse. 
It was the price of my freedom, for which Cain had paid with his life. Had I journeyed so far and forsaken so much, only to have it end like this? The heir of prophecy. You came for the Reaver, just before the Seraphon found me. You've been entombed here for five centuries. Your murderers are long dead. <gasps> five hundred years? And Vorador? Also dead. Your bloodline is erased. The age of the vampires is coming to an end. Then we must waste no time. I'm not who you think I am, nor is this a benevolent act. I have questions that apparently you alone can answer. Razil, there are forces in this world that will strive to deceive you and pervert your destiny. But you must believe your arrival foretells the salvation of the vampire race. Why then would the vampires devise a weapon to consume and imprison their savior? No. That cannot be. While the blade yet exists, I am drawn inexorably toward my doom. It was you who bound me to this fate. Only you can release me. Raziel, you have been misled. You are ordained by prophecy to wield the Reaver. <sighs> and so I do. Though not quite as you'd envisioned. Redeemer and Destroyer. Is it possible? Did I misread all the signs? It seems your destiny is more labyrinthian than I had imagined. You must trust me, Raziel. We may have very little time. I will convey you to the place where your answers lie. Where have you brought me? We are within the ancient citadel of the vampire race, long ago defiled and abandoned. This fortress endured through centuries of war against our great enemy. The Hilden? Yes. From this chamber, we witnessed the summoning of the pillars and the banishment of our adversaries from the land. <sighs> this is a dire omen. The binding is in peril. The hour of prophecy is at hand. It's too late. The pillars are already damned. As long as a single one of us stands, there is still hope. The pillars must not remain under human guardianship. They are not competent to serve. Why then did you allow the pillars to fall into human hands? Raziel, there is no time. I want answers. The world can end this instant for all I care. Very well. The Hilden cursed us as they fell, afflicting our race with a predatory bloodthirst. But with this transformation came our enemy's true revenge. Immortality. They liberated you from the Wheel of Fate. They imprisoned our souls in this flesh, expelling us from the purifying cycle of death and rebirth. And yet you pass the curse on. It was a necessary evil. Our immortality banished us from God's grace. He turned his sight from us and fell silent. Many took their own lives, unable to bear the separation from our God. Not you, though. Curse or blessing, it is the price we pay to keep the Hilden banished from the land. To sustain the binding, we had to preserve our bloodline. And so we passed the dark gift to the human successors of our fallen guardians. They rebelled, inevitably, refusing the curse and seizing the pillars as their own. And so we come to our present dilemma. While mankind governs the pillars, the binding decays. 
The Hilden strain against the barriers of their prison, scratching to gain a foothold back into this world. And what does all this mean to me? We stand at the threshold of a new eon, Raziel, and you are the fulcrum upon which our destiny turns. Beneath this room lies our innermost sanctum. The outer chamber has been opened. It appears events are already in motion. This token is the key to the mysteries you seek. I cannot accompany you. You must face this trial alone. If you prevail, you will have your answers. And if I fail the test? Then you will not return. I should have known I'd find you here. Here and everywhere, now and always. I am the wheel and its turning. I am the circle of life and death. And I am beginning to think the vampires committed suicide only to escape your voice. Do not forego my favor with your impertinence, Razia. You have finally fulfilled your purpose. I am pleased. What are you trying to obliterate here, then? What is it about me that has you so afraid? <laughs> Your fate is trivial, Raziel. It was Cain's destiny that mattered all along. Janos, what is this? The binding is failing. All is lost. We had arrived at that cataclysmic moment when a younger Cain faced his fateful dilemma as Balance Guardian. Choosing self-preservation over sacrifice, he doomed the pillars to eternal ruin. Raziel, there may yet be hope. There is one who will be called. You must seek the Scion of Balance. Dear God! Ah, Raziel, we meet again. You have played your part.
art flawlessly. It is gratifying to attain both freedom and vengeance in a single stroke. No! You cannot! <gasps> this one is strong. Good. My next move requires a more durable host. Mortals are such fragile vessels. Willing or not, you have provided the instrument of our victory. I wouldn't celebrate just yet. You pathetic creature. You haven't got a clue. The seduction of the Circle and possession of Mortanius, Ariel's murder, the corruption and collapse of the Pillars, all orchestrated as a prelude to this moment. We sought an incorruptible vessel, and you provided one. We required the blood of our ancient enemy, and you delivered Janos Audren. Having first been lured to the heart of darkness, Best of all, you murdered the Scion of Balance to get it. We've already won. Brazil, you must not allow them to carry out their plan. Kill me, and you end it now. Suicidal like the rest of them. Know your place, Brazil. The true hero plays his role, and then steps aside. <laughs> you deluded ghoul! Do you so wish to die a martyr for the vampire's lost cause? You're not leaving this chamber. I will destroy Janos if I have to. Very well then. I'll indulge you. Raziel, finish it before he returns. <gasps> oh, oh. You should have listened to me. has its beginning. Do you see? However far you stray, you will always return to me. Surrender, Raziel. Never! <laughs> Your efforts are wasted, Raziel. That weapon you bear, however endowed, Remains only a wraith blade. It cannot touch me. I will not be your prisoner. You have no choice. Your task is fulfilled. Cain has been cleared from the board, and this chamber made ready for my more malleable servants. There is nothing more for you to do. I refuse to bend my will. It has always been my will you satisfy, never your own. You parasitic fraud. You are forced to imprison me because I possess free will. You possess nothing. As you are undying, your soul cannot be returned to the wheel. But it may console you to abide here in eternity with me. Mobius, my good servant, I call you to the place of our first meeting. Return to me here. <gasps> I awoke to find myself in a shadowy realm. A disquieting stillness lay where my heart had been, the heart that had belonged to Janus Audren all along. How was it possible that I still lived? You are still very full, Vampire. That will go first. This realm will render you hideous. You will go mad, and will not know it. 
What is this place? Do you not think of this place every day, vampire? Or are we truly forgotten? forgotten? This is the exile into which we were driven. But soon now, soon we will be free. We will be free! strongly drawn, compelled even, not to linger here, but to go to the Vampire Citadel at once. I knew what ominous hour this was in Nosgoth's history. For here was the event that had shaped my entire existence. I had cast my fate, refusing the sacrifice, damning the pillars, and founding my doomed empire upon their ruins. I would raise the Salafan priests to be my closest lieutenants, and would one day cast the strongest of them, my servant Raziel, into the abyss, dealing one last hand to play against fate. But in the end, had it made any difference? Had I misread the signs, as Mobius told me, in my arrogance, had I missed my cast at destiny? The Hilden are merely an inconvenient consequence. They will be dealt with in time. It is a small price to pay for Cain's death. You're a bit premature. Cain! Is there a crack in your omniscience after all, Mobius? First, your omniscience, and now your powers. You're slipping badly. This is not possible. The part of me that staff affected is no longer in its place. But you already knew that, didn't you? I always was considered heartless. And now, Mobius, it is time... To kill me? Again? Your only solution for every problem... Kill! This is not a debate. You see, this time, you have nothing that I want. <laughs> Oh, you think this will matter? I serve one who has power over life and death. Then go to him. I am his obedient, his devoted servant. Soon, all pain will fade, and my master will bring me life once more. Master, my apologies. A momentary oversight. Somehow Cain still lives and has unexpectedly dispatched me. Make use of your good servant and... <coughs> Go to your master then. I release you to the wheel. Oh, God! No. Do you see it now? The monster that you served. Is this what you imagined when you worshipped it? are irrelevant, Raziel. Mobius was a good servant, but he was of no further use. 
his long life had run its course. You see, even when you rebel, you are doing my will. Perhaps. But something has changed, hasn't it? You didn't foresee Cain's return. You have both traced your paths along the wheel. This is where the journey ends. You haven't the means to kill either one of us. Ah, but you can be stopped. And you will come to understand how oblivion can be a mercy. You and Cain will spend eternity buried here together. Praying for the merciful release of a death that will never come. But I was armed with newfound knowledge, and it burned within me. Redeemer and destroyer. Mobius had never seen his master until the Soul Reaver purified his sight. Even the ancient vampires had no idea what it was they so righteously worshipped. You must unite what is this. All the conflict and strife throughout history, all the fear and hatred, served but one purpose, to keep my master's wheel turning. All souls were prisoners, trapped in the pointless round of existence, leading distracted, blunted lives, until death returned them, always in ignorance, to the wheel. The coin is still turning. But what hope had there been? One cannot fight the unseen. Only then will the scion of balance be armed for his true endeavor. Despair, Raziel. There is no escape. It was then I knew what I had to do. I alone could end this. Cain, do you so enjoy death? Yes, Raziel. No! Yes, this is how... No, Raziel! The Soul Reaver, pure of all corruption. This is what it is for. This is what I am for. The two become one, both Soul Reavers, together, and the Scion of Balance is healed. And I am not your enemy, not your destroyer. I am, as before, your right hand, your sword. No, Razia. This can't be the way. And now you will see the true enemy. Raziel. And it was then I saw. So I am revealed to you at last. What in hell? I am the origin of life. The devourer of death. I am the hub of the wheel. The purifying cycle to which all souls must be drawn. Had I condemned Raziel to this nightmare when I cast him into the abyss? You may ponder the futility of your ambitions as you spend a deathless eternity beneath a mountain of rubble. You and your Soul Reaver will go equally mad as the eons pass. The Citadel of the Apostates will become your living tomb. Your words are hardening. <laughs> For you would not fear us unless we could truly do you harm. No! You are nothing! False God. This is the end. The final turn of your wheel. You cannot destroy me. I am the engine of life itself. The wheel will 
return, the plague of your kind will be purged from this world, and on that inevitable day, your wretched, stagnant soul will finally be mine. In the meantime, you'd best burrow deep. Now at last, the masks had fallen away. The strings of the puppets had become visible, and the hands of the Prime Mover exposed. Most ironic of all was the last gift that Raziel had given me. More powerful than the sword that now held his soul, more acute even than the vision his sacrifice had accorded me. The first bitter taste of that terrible illusion. <laughs>